Okay. All right. I am officially recording this webinar. In the past, I've gone through like half a webinar and then been like, oh, wait, I forgot to record. So I definitely did. Um, okay. So today we're going to do three uh, major things. If you don't know me, my name is Abby Hunt from Dollar Store Reseller and Dollar Store Arbitrage. Um, today I want to just list a regular, normal little thing. It's actually a little trinket box. Real exciting, I know it's like little cowboy boots, trinket box. Um, then I'm going to do a parent-child listing where I have three similar items. They're all from a Halloween coaster set. And then um, I have a bundle. It's a really small bundle, but it's a bundle just the same. Um, it happens to be like, you know, my favorite housewares, oven mitt, pot holder, um, nothing really exciting, but I want you to get the basics of the bundle down. Um, one thing that I do want to say is if you have something that's like a onesie, like this is just, it's, <laughs> it's actually this little um, reindeer set for a dog, like he wears a little tie and it has a hat with the little reindeer antlers. If you only have one, sometimes it doesn't make sense to even make the listing on Amazon. It, you may just want to throw it on eBay if you have an eBay account because the time it takes you to list this one item isn't, you know, it may not be worth your time. If, you know, if you want to go to the trouble to do it, um, this one actually has a barcode. So if you scan it and it doesn't come up and you really think it's going to sell for, you know, $25, decide if you can list quickly, go for it. But if it's going to take you half a day to list this one item, it's totally not worth your time, especially if you're only going to make like 5 or $6. So really know when you even want to bother making a listing uh, before you start. The other thing is make sure that the listing doesn't already exist on Amazon. It's possible that if you scan this barcode, it's not going to come up. But then if you put it in by the title, black hat, reindeer, two-piece set, um, dog, you know, just put dog. I wouldn't put much more than that. It may come up and someone put it under a different UPC or the different. there's a different size available. Like this happens to be this small size, extra small, extra small, small. So maybe somebody listed the medium. So a listing actually exists. But again, you know, do a little homework before you decide to even start making a listing on Amazon. Now I've been on listing on Amazon for four years now, I guess. And there's still times where I just, I don't want to be bothered making a listing. I'd rather go into a store and buy things that I can scan and just list, you know, scan it, tell scan power. Yes, I'm going to buy it and just list it. You can list directly through the Amazon, you know, Seller Central. If you use Scan Power or Inventory Lab or any of those, it all works and gets your stuff to Amazon, which is really the bottom line. So um, the best way I thought to do this was I will just, you know, use that first 10 minutes and make the first listing. As you have questions, put them in the chat because I don't have my partner in crime. Usually my son is my um, like my producer, so he can read the questions and shoot them, shoot the answers or shoot them to me because I'm by myself today. If you just put them in the chat, once I'm done, I can scroll through and answer questions. So if you think of a question as I'm going, I'll go back and say, oh yes, well, the reason I did this was because whatever. And I'm going to keep disappearing because I have four dogs and they seem to have to go in and out a lot. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, just someone in the chat, everybody can hear me okay. I'm coming through clear. I know I talk fast. It's just a, it's a Jersey thing, I guess. I try to slow down. But if you can hear me all right, just hit me in the chat. Great, thanks. Okay. Let me get something important here. And share my screen so everybody can see what's going on. Okay, so. Like I said, the first thing you're going to do is you are going to check to see if the item you have is on Amazon. If it's not on Amazon, great, go ahead and, you know, make a new listing. Now, the listing I'm going to make is for this little trinket box. It's only like three inches tall. It's made out of resin. It's not, it's not like some amazing jewelry. Um, it's going to go in a housewares department, so most people could sell it. One thing I do, like this has no barcode, no nothing. Um, I buy barcodes right on eBay from Leading Edge Codes. I'll give you the link for that later. Um, 
you get a thousand of them for like fourteen dollars. So I've got pages and pages of them. Um, a lot of people do things digitally. I'm more a paper kind of gal, so I print them up. I'm going to use a barcode, cross it off, and go to, and then use the next one. So what you're going to do is go to inventory and then add a product. This page can look two different ways. It'll either look like this or the uh, the box will be up here. I don't I don't know why it's different sometimes. Here is where you would check to see if your listing um, is, I mean, if your item is already listed. If not, go ahead and create a new product listing. Now, before you list, you want to have a couple things ready. You want to know the title that you're going to use. You want clear pictures that, um, you know, fulfill all of Amazon's needs. They want completely white background. They want it in a square kind of format with the item in the main part of the picture, like not this little tiny item and then lots of white around it. They want, you know, like it would be like this if it were my head, you know, this is the item and then just a little bit of white around the outside. So you want the item, um, you want to know the dimensions of it before you start, any keywords you're going to use. I use like keyword families, like most of my things I'll say, gift, Christmas, um, you know, all this kind of, like whatever goes with it. This one happens to be this little Western cowboy thing. So it'll say boots, spurs, you know, whatever like Western kind of things people would um, would search for. I also put this um, in the keywords for this wedding favor. But again, I put all those like in a list before I even start. So the keywords, maybe the bullet points, the UPC from my list, um, and I check similar items on Amazon to see what descriptions and bullet points people have already put because those things are selling. So hopefully if I use the same ones, mine will sell. So if I put trinket box here in Amazon, box, and tell it I want to find the category. There's a little houseware section. Really, really. I don't want it to be in jewelry. The one thing, of course, I don't do ahead of time. Um, I guess jewelry boxes, storage and organization is going to, oh, de decorative boxes. Here we go. Let's use that one. Okay, so it's going to put it in that little section there. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab the title that I already picked, paste it in. If you know the manufacturer, this one doesn't seem to have it. It doesn't actually have it. Um, you can just skip it. UPC. Let it know it's a UPC. And like I said, I use leading leading edge codes because they're that GC one whatever, certified. Uh, variations, there aren't any. The offer, it's new, so I'm going to tell it it's new. And you don't want to say something's new if it's not, because it's the, the biggest red flag that Amazon will give you. If you create a listing and you say something's new and the person gets it and says it's not what they, like it's not the condition that they said it was, that's huge. Like as far as metrics go, that's really going to crush you. Uh, I'll just make it $9.99. And make sure that you're telling it that you want Amazon to ship it. Just like if you were listing anything else um, on Amazon, you want to, um, that you're sending fulfillment by Amazon, you want to make sure that you're telling it that you want Amazon to ship it. Now, images, you want to have all your pictures ready. Not those pictures. these pictures. So the very first picture is the very first one that they're going to see when they look for the item. And again, they tell you here what they want. They've got to be a thousand pixels on one side. They've got to take up at least 85% of the, the picture itself has to take up 85%. Um, you really want them to be square because when somebody's looking on their phone, the picture comes up properly. That's for Amazon or eBay. That was a great tip from Jason Smith. And you'll see I took a, you know, a couple different angles so that they could see what the thing looks like. 
so they know it's not like felt lined. It's just this little trinket box. Okay, the description, again, I did everything ahead of time so that I didn't have to do like a lot of typing so I don't type very quickly and you, nobody wants to see that. This, the description is actually what shows up way down on the bottom. Um, I just, I use it kind of as a, just like a, a holding place for now because the things that you put here are those bullet points that will show up next to your item. So the very first thing they're going to do is know that it's, you know, the actual size. So when they look at it, the very first bullet point tells them the size. So if they're looking for like a larger box to put something in, this is not what they want. Tell them what they can use it for. I put the dimensions of the interior part as well. Now they want these to be um, sentence fragments. They don't want like a whole book here. They want sentence fragment, no period, just put it in. And also if you'll notice, I put three inches, the little mark for inches, but in the title itself, they want, um, they want you to say three inches. They don't want you to put, um, oops, jewelry. Um, they don't want you to put the quotes because sometimes search engines, you know, are looking at them kind of funny. So it's looking for a manufacturer. So I have like kind of a generic one I use when it absolutely must have a, a name. And you'll notice that you can click advanced view. This will give you many other um, options. And sometimes Amazon will require some of them. And it tells you after you get there, like you saw, I went off this particular tab of the vital info. And then it gave me like a little, like a little yield sign, a little warning sign that I had to go back. Now we were in images. They all loaded the description. And this is where we were. And I said that there's beautiful um, detail work because there's actually like this really cool little scroll work right inside the, the lid here that didn't really, you know, come out great in the pictures. So I just wanted to let people know that there's like a little bit more to this box. And finally, I'll say it's a great gift. Okay, so what I did is I put in the vital information, which is like what you must know, the title, who made it, and the UPC. Then I made the offer, which is my exact offer, which is I'm telling you it's new and I'm offering it for $9.99. Then I went to images. You have to load at least one image. And the very first one you do is going to be your, um, the little, you know, the small thumbnail image that's there. So make sure that that, it looks like your image. You know, I don't want to have some close up of like the hinge on the, on the, uh, as my first picture. Then the description, sometimes these are flipped. The key product features are the bullet points that show up next to the picture when someone clicks on that Amazon listing. And then the, the product description is the one that shows up further down, down by like the ASIN and the rank and all that type of stuff on a listing page. So we'll just keep some of that information. Now keywords, um, target audience, I try to just be general about it. Um, it's really like it's a gifty item, so I guess it could be for like a teen or whatever, but really you're looking for someone, you know, it's a gift. And then search terms, again, you can add many terms here, and these are things that are searchable but people don't see. So I put in wedding favors and all kinds of, you know, I put hinged box, I put wild west, I put Christmas, birthday, all this type of stuff because they're just searchable terms that somebody may use when they're searching for the item. You can use Google for this type of thing. You can um, go to merchant words if you want to, but by putting in a bunch of these um, search terms, if someone's looking for a Western wedding favor, this would come up even though wedding favor isn't in the title. You don't want the title to be so cluttered that people, you know, don't even, don't even look to see what you have. And then we'll do one more. 
Um, I forget how many characters you have in here now. Um, it they just increased it, so there's quite a quite a few that you could put in there. You don't necessarily need to put um, like if it's box or boxes. They say that it'll that their own search thing will find that, but I go ahead and do it anyway because I would rather my stuff be found than rely on Amazon search, you know, to add an S to something. So if I have, you know, oven mitt or oven mitts, I'll, I'll put mitts in the search here because I've got plenty of space to do it and I wanna make sure that if someone's looking for multiples that they would still find my item. All right, subject matter, none of this is really, necessary. If something has an asterisk next to it, it definitely wants that information. So then we'll go to more details. Now here I would definitely go to the advanced view because what's going to happen is if you don't tell Amazon the size of the item, when you go to list it later, like when you actually go to send it into Amazon, it will give you a warning saying, hey, you need to put the dimensions and then it stops you, you can't necessarily send it right away. Sometimes it takes 15 minutes to uh, um, to populate. This is four ounces. There's not multiples in here. And then there's two places, the item dimensions itself, which this is three by two by two. And make sure you put inches and not feet because it's going to take, it's, they're going to think that you have this enormous uh, boot hanging out at their place and they're going to charge you the storage on feet. So make sure you say inches, it's four ounces. And then further down, it's going to ask the package dimension, package dimension. So if I box this little thing, because it is actually breakable if you dropped it. Um, and the little box I have for it, which you don't have to box it, this particular thing needs one though, is small. and it adds an ounce. And then further down, it asks for the type of product it is, uh, fabric type, usually there's just a uh, material type, and this is a resin. So I'm gonna let it know, poly resin is good. And that's it, now you can click save and finish. Now, throughout the process, like sometimes you'll get to the part with the photos and it'll say save and finish. Don't do it until you've gone through all of the tabs at the top. I don't know if you see my little bar stuck here. Oh, there we go. Um, you wanna make sure you've gone to vital info, offer images, description, keywords, and more details before you click it. Otherwise it's gonna kind of end your listing and then you've gotta go into your, go back into your Amazon Seller Central and, um, edit it and you know go back in. Now, now that I save it, there's a new page that comes up and says, uh, that's not it. This is just saying I have to put a label on it. Okay, I know. And sometimes there's a page that says, hey, we're creating this product. Um, it's gonna take 15 minutes and that's fine. I'm gonna add it to an existing shipping plan that's going to Amazon and add that item to it. Now you see the trinket box is in here with everything else. If I have one of them or if I have seven of them, whatever, this is just to get this in here. Now, if you immediately go back to your inventory, and then I'll stop and take questions because I know I kind of buzzed through that. The trinket box will show up. The image doesn't always show up. It takes maybe 15 minutes or so. If I realized I put the wrong image in, I forgot to do something, if you click edit, it brings you right back to where you were. So if you just click edit, you can make any changes right away. So if I needed to change the title, you really wanna do it right away, especially the title, because once they kind of lock it in, it's very difficult. Like I have a, something that has a strawberry in it and I dropped the R, the first R, so it's strawberry, and it just wouldn't let me fix it. So I just added strawberry, spelled properly, in the, um, in the keywords that it could be found. So the thing's still sold, but the, it looked like I was a bonehead because of the title. So, all right, let's see what's going on. And what kind of questions you guys have? 
or not? All right, you're stuck with me again. Okay, for um, the photos, I use PhotoFuse for um, like cleaning out the background. Whoops, that's not it. Here. PhotoFuse is actually like a product that is for people who sell on Etsy. Um, there's no cost. You just upload a photo. Um, I actually did a video on how to use PhotoFuse. And my mother said the sound was weird, but no one else has complained. So I think it's because she was trying to listen to it on her, you know, old phone. Um, but you can save that link, just copy it and paste it like into a, like a little note section on your computer. Um, and that shows you how to use PhotoFuse. You just kind of highlight where the picture is and save it. If it looks good, you download it and it gives you a completely white, back, white background. So Barbara, I use two main things for my keywords. I look for other things that are similar. So like with the trinket box, I put in Western trinket box and look to see what kind of um, words were in the titles and also in the bullet points and made sure that they were part of my keywords. I also, um, I have, I couldn't find it, I was looking for it quickly. I have like a word document that has keyword families. So if I have um, like a Christmassy type item, it'll um, say Christmas, Xmas, gift, stocking stuffer, um, all that type of stuff. And it's just from me looking at other things and shopping, you know, just in general. Um, and then I also use merchant words, which um, I think this is still good. If you use this link, merchant words is like $7. And the nice thing with that is you can type in keywords there and you type it in and then you click in the upper right hand corner. I forget what it is. It says like most searched or something and it will sort it by what people search the most. So maybe it wasn't Western trinket box, but it was um, I would put in trinket and it would say novelty or jeweled or whatever. And it'll say what the best ones are and you kind of keep putting in words that go with your item and you'll find more and more keywords that you can put in. And again, I'm sorry, I don't remember what the max is, but it's quite a few. Like you could put in wedding gift, party, birthday, uh, for mom, for her, and you don't have to repeat words. Like if you did for mom, her, is the keyword tree available? You mean the, the keyword thing that I do? That's just something I've made up on my own and it depends on what you're selling. But if you have any other way to search um, for similar terms, those would be good. Yeah, mine are just like, uh, it, like it depends on what I'm selling. And I have like little um, notepad uh, type things that say like quick list notes. So I had a bunch of dog toys, this particular one that I have right here. Um, it was, it's just um, like tug, toy, chew, fetch, like it's silly things, but they're things that when I looked at like Petco's website, it was great durable toys to satisfy a dog's urge to chew, tug, fetch. And I want all that type of thing. If somebody's looking for a fetch toy for their dog, or if they're looking for, this one was a cotton rope, like a knotted toy. Um, just looking at that, I just threw all those words in because I'm not really sure what people are always looking for. Um, Oh, here's a good one. This, I couldn't even tell you what I was selling, but I'm going to throw these words in the, uh, the chat so you can see what one of my little crazy things look like. So this is the type of thing that I would have. This was for, it was probably like a Christmas towel, which obviously had like pine cones on it or something. So I put like all these words in. So Christmas was in the title, so I didn't have to repeat that in the search terms. But then I put Xmas, kitchen, bathroom, because it was a dish towel. Um, there must be snowmen in the picture, so I put snowmen, must be in the title, so I put snowman, 
I didn't have to repeat snow, but snow woman, seasonal holiday guest, um, Americana, wicker border. This all must be whatever the, like it was like a pine cone snowman or something. And then um, winter, because not everybody celebrates Christmas, although so many things are searched that way. I would put winter, I would put Santa, whether or not he was on the, the thing itself. Um, and then stocking decor, decoration, uh, you could put housewarming, you could put gift, you could put, uh, if it, you know, applies to Thanksgiving or Christmas or something like that, um, you know, those are all good. So it's just kind of throwing keywords in. You could, um, you know, if you've got kids around, say, okay, tell me three words that have to do with Christmas or, you know, or depending on what you have, you know, hold up your little thing and say, okay, describe this boots, cowboy, you know, they may say horses. Um, and it just really depends on what someone's looking for. You're trying to get them to find your item. And that's something else you can edit. If you go back into that edit tab, you could add more keywords if you thought of them. Like, oh, that's right, I should put that it could be a gift or a wedding favor. Uh, you no longer have to put the commas between the words, which is great because it gives you more space. You used to need them, but now you don't. So I know I, I go through it quickly because I've done it before, but did the, the steps make sense as far as um, you go to sell it, your seller central, you then go to add a product, and then you choose the category. Once you choose the category, it brings you right to the page where you have to put all that information in, the vital info, the offer, images, description, keywords, and then the more details, which you really want to put in the dimensions of the product. All right, so the next one I'm going to do, um, the category is more difficult to change, but you can. It's in that final tab, um, the, more pro the more information tab, uh, more details. Um, yeah, it's category item type, so you can edit that. Um, if you can't, it's a matter of like creating a ticket to Amazon and saying, you know, I need to change this category. Uh, and that's only if you really find that it's in the wrong category. Um, if it's a matter of like a subcategory, it might not be as important. All right, so I'm going to do these, this little bundle, and then I'm going to do the parent child um, because I want to show you a trick with this, uh, with listing this guy. Or not, <laughs> sorry, I can't share my screen. I broke my computer. No, I'm just kidding. I just can't seem to get where I wanna go. Ah, oh, there we go, okay. So we have these two pieces. And if you saw my webinar with the lovely Cordelia Blake, um, when you're in a dollar store specifically, cause I love dollar stores. Um, if you're in there and you find something like this, but you scan it and it doesn't come up, you can just type in sunflowers in your search. Like I use scan power and the Amazon app when I, um, when I search. Do, 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 do. Somewhere I've got scan power. Here we go. Scan power is free, and I like it because I find that it's more accurate than the um, the Amazon seller app. But the Amazon seller app will tell you if you are restricted in a product, if it is, if the whole line is now restricted. Housewares are kind of a safe bet, so I like when people start with those. Um, if I scanned this one, oven mitt, it might come up, but it would be selling for like $4. So I would put a couple things together to make it worth um, buying, paying the $2 for two items, and then creating a listing. Um, and again, I would get like four sets because it doesn't make sense for me to make a listing for just one item. So we'll go back to my Seller Central. And in Seller Central, there's a trick. So let's say that I'm going to see if I have a pot holder set already. 
which I happen to know I do, so that's kind of a cheat. And something that you can do is, oops, I did that wrong. Um, something that you can do, which those of you who have been struggling with creating listings are going to hate me in about 30 seconds. If you have um, an item that's similar to it, you can go to the end here and click, whoops, let me move me, copy listing. Now what that will do is that will auto fill in a whole bunch of information. So instead of a three piece green sunflower tapestry design kitchen set, it's only a two piece with pot holder and oven mitt. And now I don't have to type everything in. It doesn't have the dish towel, so I'll get rid of that. Uh, the brand is Home Concepts. Uh, I think it's also the manufacturer. It's like a private manufacturer, so I'll just, sometimes I put MIC for made in China. I don't know how they feel about that, but that's what I do. And then the product ID I have here. Oh, no, I don't. I lied. Now, I got here through the copy listing um, link of something I already had so that it put in a bunch of information for me. But you can absolutely do it the way we did before, where we went to, uh, whoops, where we went to inventory, add a product, and then from there, you create a new product listing and you pick the category there. What this does is this saves a bunch of steps. So the offer for the three piece was $15, so I'll make it like $11 because it's only two pieces. I can always lower the price. I can raise the price if they're selling so fast, I can't even keep them in stock. The images, I'll have to put new images in because even though I'm going on a similar listing, it's not the exact same. So again, I want to put the best picture first. And then I took a picture with the oven mitt flipped so that they could see that the back is a solid green and not um, it's not, the design isn't on both sides. So like I said, if this comes up save and finish, resist the urge, don't click it because you want to make sure that you put all this other information in. Now, had I made this other listing more recently, all of this stuff would still be in there as well as the keywords, which may, ah, no, now that they're not in there, but it just saves you time if, if the, all of that stuff auto fills for you. So here, Um, again, I just put this in here to make my life easy. I t always in the bullet points, I say what the dimensions are of the product because that's where the people are going to find it. You could say in the title what the dimensions are, but what ends up happening is that people you know, they look quickly, they don't look to the end of the title. So when they hit the bullet points, they'll be like, oh, that looks like the set I want. Oh yeah, that's, you know, that's the right size. That's what I want. Um, if I know it, I'll put the, um, if I know it, then I will put the uh, fabric content. And my final one is usually like, hey, buy this as a gift or buy this for your home or, you know, some sort of like call to action, like, hey, this is great for a gift, like buy it now. Oops, did it yell at me for something? Maybe not. Okay, keywords again. Uh, we want to do target audience as adults. Oh, this is really funny. I think it says like adults, children. Oh, I did this the other day and it was like adults, children, cats. It was so random. I don't know why I did that, but it didn't, so it's not as much fun. But adults, like I don't think it matters if it's men or anything. Um... I thought I had a keyword, like a little keyword family ready, but subject matter. Oops, no, that's not what I want. Search terms. So sunflowers, maybe do it sunflowers. Kitchen, housewarming, gifts, 
new mom, I don't know, new home. Uh, maybe it's good for an Easter gift. Easter, spring, uh, gardening, someone likes gardening. And this is silly, since I'm here, I can show you guys merchant words. And I'm gonna do my best to keep you, you know, only keep you an hour so everybody can go to dinner. If you go to merchant words, I'm gonna put in, um, we'll try pot holder first. It, those like pot holder racks, like those things will probably come up as well. But once you search, Pot leaf pot holder. If you sort for the highest search volume, everything that searches the most. So pot holders with an S has been searched more than a million times. So clearly, by putting pot holders in the title, um, would you know make my life easier. Even though there's only one, let's go ahead and put pot holders because I guess an oven mitt could, you know, would also be a pot holder. Pot lid holder, kitchen towels and pot holders, oven mitt and pot holder set. So let's make sure set is in my title. Set is there, so we're good. And anything that isn't in my um, isn't in my title or doesn't make sense in the title, um, like I put tapestry in the title. It's not cotton. It's not like it was a polyester mix. Um, pot holders green. Five thousand people searched that, so that's good. Um, but you would just, you know, keep going. So patterns, 10,000 people search the word patterns with it, but that's to actually create their own pot holder. But there's no reason really not to put it in the, um, the keywords. So we'll go ahead and put patterns. They mean more like creating, not like a pattern, like a, you know, particular pattern. Um, Easter, spring, summer, fall. Oh, let's do Thanksgiving. Oops, or not. And again, these are just, people never see these. This is just as the public shops and puts in keywords, your thing either shows up or not. And then in more details, shipping weight is four ounces. And because I use the, the uh, um, what do you call it? the copy listing and it was too long ago, now it wants the category. So I've got to go back to kind of the beginning anyway. But if I were listing a whole bunch of pot holders and oven mitt sets that were different, not that the whole parent child thing, but if they were all different, I would do them all in the same day because once I listed one, I could then say copy, um, copy listing and then so much of it would already be filled out with for me. I would just have to change it if I had, you know, my next set was um, the chef. Like it would be, you know, chubby chef or, you know, French chef. So it would be French chef and I would change the things. I'd change the, just the things that mattered. If the dimensions on the pot holders were the same, I would leave it. And then I'm only changing the things that have to be changed and it makes the listing much faster. So if you're doing balloon sets or, you know, whatever, you're going to make sure you list one and then go all the way to the end and then copy. So you're selling a similar item and then as much as possible is already filled in for you. So this is, as we'll say oven mitts. Find the category. I could browse myself, but I'd rather they tell me what they want. So pot holders, oven mitts, either one. I'm going to say oven mitts. Oh, well, I guess with a million people searching oven mitts, I should, or pot holders, I should have done that. Uh, so. I don't put it in a manufacturer's suggested retail price unless it's important. Like if it's forty nine ninety nine and I'm selling it for twenty six, you know, like something that would you know really be helpful for a person. Again, make sure that you put the right dimensions in. Oops. 
package itself with both together is going to be it's just a convention to put the longest dimension first it's like if you're selling a sword you wouldn't say that it's like six inches by you know whatever i don't know why i said sword of all things i could have picked but um just in general you put the longest side first four ounces and i think it's going to ask for the no the fabric types there okay um now because this is a bundle um you really are supposed to put bundle in the title so I'll put that as the last word and tell it you want to go to the advanced view because you need to tell Amazon how many pieces are being sold in this bundle. So this particular one, there's two pieces. Size is not particularly important. I'm gonna put green for the color. And if I don't put color and color map, I'll get an error telling me to fill in the color map, which just wants the same thing. And that's it, save and finish. Now, if there's anything that's missing, it'll yell at me now. I'll get like one of those little triangles with the exclamation point saying, hey, you forgot something. All right, it's saying it wants a barcode, great. And they don't mean that I need the original UPC on the product. They want my barcode that I'm gonna print out from you know, Seller Central when I get ready to ship it. And again, it's listed. I mean, it took 42 minutes for me to list two things, but it's because I'm showing you. And my point is, if you did a bunch of things all in, at once, I mean, you're not going to list, you know, a thing a minute. If you're really, if you're that fast, you can come work for me. <laughs> but um, list, make, creating your own listings is not like it shouldn't stop you from selling things. You definitely want to see if something similar is selling because you don't want to just say, oh, well, you know, if I sell these, you know, these great cups, then everybody's going to buy them. Just because you list it doesn't mean it's going to be there. You want to find ones that are similar that will sell. Okay. Quick questions, concerns, anything? Um, Susan, what do you mean if it's not my original listing? Like, I don't own any of these products. Um, I, I do at least two photos for each product. That doesn't mean that I do all of them. I mean, I don't do that for all of them. Yes, I'm going to re we are recording this. Um, if there is already a listing for something, you can still edit it. Like if you wanted to add keywords and things, if you find that something is not um, selling. Um, I haven't really had a problem with editing listings that already exist. What you need to do though is put it in your inventory. So let's say that that trinket box, you don't have that in your inventory, but you think there's other, you want to sell it. So there's other keywords you want to add to it. You would have to, to tell Amazon that you have it so that it goes into your inventory so that you could edit it. Does that make sense? Like if it's not in your seller central, you can't change um, any of the qualities that are there. Um, I do at least two photos. Uh, Deb Jean, the, the current thing is no commas between keywords. That's the most recent one. And I checked before I list, before I told you guys that. Um, I don't put in the manufacturer to suggest a retail price unless it's particularly important or if it's printed on the box and I can't get it off, like if it's an electronic item, because um, I try not to ruin things too much. Yes, I have run into problems where the manufacturer and the UPC code didn't match, but it was um, for the, I, the whole bundle thing has um, people like all crazy. Um, sometimes if you just, um, one of the things I do like home concepts was the one brand. If you put the words together without the space, it's still their brand so that I'm still tagging them in it. But uh, Amazon doesn't recognize it as home space concepts. So it's a cheat, but it would get you through. Um, 
you could put combined. Um, Amazon wants you like, like if mine said, you know, Abby's best bundles, that would be my brand. If I'm creating something that is, um, you know, like two oven mitts and, uh, you know, and a coaster set or something and they're mixed brands. So if I put this all together as, you know, like a welcome home gift or something, um, then you could put mixed brands, but I would put like Abby's best bundles kitchen or something like I use treasure toys. I have a hair accessories, one that I use that's just generic because I buy a lot of like, you know, made in China kind of stuff. And it just says like Xing Swang province or something. Um, and I don't, I don't do it to, um, be like sneaky at all. I just am trying to get the listing on there and all the information is there at some point. Now, um, as far as UPC codes and what Amazon's actually cracking down on, I don't have them. Um, I was listing Crayola crayons and markers today. No bundles, just straight. They were like leftover from something we had. We just wanted them out of the house. When we scanned the Crayola um, colored pencils, it came up that, but then also a bundle. Don't do that. <laughs> if you're gonna create a bundle with Crayola's pencils, use a UPC that you've purchased to make that bundle. So you can put the bundle with coloring books or whatever, but don't use one of the barcodes from one of the items. You need to use a completely different one just for the bundle. And that's the kind of thing that Amazon is trying to crack down on by saying, use the GS1 codes um, because they don't want, you know, six different things popping up with the, um, on that UPC. You want, you know, this UPC to be this item and this UPC to be this item. And if you put the two together, it's a third UPC. So trying not to get like into that whole, <laughs> that realm of the, the things. Um, okay, so parent child listings. I hate these <laughs> with a passion. Um, I would much rather, no, I like these coasters. They're selling, they sell very well. But um, the parent child thing makes me nuts. I would much rather create three separate listings for these coasters, but Amazon is really trying to keep similar items together. So, and you know, and that's fine. So I've seen plenty of like oven mitt listings and things where it's, you know, oven mitt and pot holder, and then it's the red set, the blue set, the green set that, you know, if you buy t-shirts, you can pick all the different things. So that said, whoa, not that. Um, Let's create a parent child listing. So go back to Seller Central where everything happens. Add a product. Okay, there is one very special part of this whole process that makes it work. We're gonna do the same thing we did before, create a new product listing. And in this case, it's these, they're sets of eight. I know there's a glare. Um, but it's a set of eight um, Halloween coasters. They're just little paper coasters. They're, you know, barware kind of thing. And there's two places this is. It's in, it's in home decor, but it's also in barware. And I think because these are more like a party item, I, I put mine in barware. Okay, again, advanced view will give you more options. And this is, this time I need it to because we're gonna do some extra stuff. So you wanna click advanced view. I actually like this, that they give you the option to just do like a quick list. This advanced view will let us do the whole bit though. All right, so my product name for this are Papercraft Coasters. Now. I have three different colors here. I have a green one, a purple one, and an orange one, the or, or yellow. The yellow is a spider, the purple is uh, skulls, and the green are bats. They're all Halloween coasters. I don't put any of those colors in the very first listing because what I'm doing here is I'm making the parent listing. So this is just generic. It's the set of eight four-inch coasters, and they're part of this Magic Potion series. The manufacturer is Papercraft. There is not a model number. 
occasionally it makes you put a model number in, put 123 or 101 or whatever you want. Um, if there were, I would put one on, but these, like, they all have the same UPC, so it makes more sense for me to use the ones that I have. Package quantity is eight. There are eight coasters in one package. I'm not saying that there are eight different types. There are eight coasters in one package. Don't put in a color uh, size. You can put in if you like. It's four inch. Uh, the brand name, these are actually Magic Potion series. Magic Potion Party Coasters. So we'll put that in just in case someone's looking for that. Otherwise, brand name would be Peanuts or, you know, Door the Explorer. And a product ID, we need a UPC for the main product, which feels like a throwaway UPC for me, but I'll do it. Okay, UPC. Now, uh, sorry, hold on one second. Okay. Now, this lovely variations page that we keep flipping, skipping past, we are going to tell Amazon how our different items, uh, how our items differ. This one happens to just be by color. Um, if I had a set of eight, a set of 24, a set of 48, then they would, it would be package quantity. If it were clothing, it would be size or size and color. So in this case, it's just color. Now, you need to tell it at least one variation, one different color that you're gonna use, and I have three here. So I'm actually going to say yellow spider, or not, there we go. Purple skull, normally you would just say purple, green, whatever, but this these variations, there's a purple skull, there's a purple cemetery, there were like a couple different, like there's just no, I couldn't just put one. So I'm actually gonna put these as the variations. You're gonna tell it to add the variations and they're gonna give you a little grid on the bottom. Now, you'll notice the, the parent one doesn't even have its own line. It used to, and now they've changed it so that you're only putting the information in for all of the children listings. Okay, so I added the three colors that I had, purple, uh, yellow, purple, and green, and now it wants information on each of these. You're going to put the color map in, otherwise you're gonna get an error where it's gonna say, hey, you didn't put in a color map. I don't know why, it just does. So it's gonna be yellow, like real yellow, not yellow spider. Purple, oops. And green. If it's, you know, different variations of green, it would still just be green. If you have a camo green one and a Kelly green, it would just be green. The skew, if you keep track of your own items, you're welcome to put that in, but you don't need to. And the product ID are the different UPCs, which I gave my, I cheated here. This is the green bats. And tell it it's a UPC. And, oops, I lost my six, my yellow spiders. and the purple skulls. And I have to admit, this is something that I like about my job. Like we had this crazy conversation today about um, all, like purple skulls. Well, how many purple skulls do we have? Oh, well we have this many yellow spiders, but then there's also the yellow pumpkins. And it was just, if anyone didn't know what we did for a living, it would just sound so bizarre. It was very funny. You want to say that they're all new. Like I said, make sure if it's new, it's new. If they're collectible, they're collectible. You know, and really, if you're going to deal with books or anything like that, make sure that you look at Amazon's um, condition guidelines because the worst thing is for someone to say that your product didn't, um, you know, didn't act like it didn't look like it was supposed to. Uh, your price, we'll do nine ninety nine each. You're supposed to be able to put it up in here and it autofill. And that has yet to work for me, so I don't know why it's even there. And then something I discovered is that you must tell it that you have at least one. If you don't, it never populates the listings. 
the variations. I don't know why, it's just a thing. So the only thing you don't absolutely have to put here is the SKU. Everything else should be filled out. Don't click save and finish because you haven't done everything yet. The offer, which we just did, but you can tell it that they're new. Oh, doesn't even need it, okay. Um, again, you want Amazon to ship it. The images, I wait and I go back in and edit them individually because I don't want the wrong pictures to be matched up with the others because here it doesn't sp split them up at all. Like it doesn't tell Amazon, it does, hold on. <laughs> it doesn't tell Amazon, you like that? My phone rang and the dogs barked. Um, it doesn't tell Amazon which variation goes with which picture. So at this point, I skip this. If there is a trick and someone wants to tell me what it is, I'll take it, but I wait and I go back. Description. Uh, da, da, da. Again, I do the same thing over and over. I'm not doing anything particularly interesting but I type out as much as I can. I mean, I type it as I go. I did it ahead of time because I don't, I don't type quickly and you guys don't need to watch me type. It's bad enough. You've got to watch me copy and paste. But this way, you're ready. And if I had a bunch of things that were similar, I would be doing them all in a row. Now you'll notice, again, you'll notice I didn't put that they're green with little bats and all this type of stuff. Everything I did was, is very generic like made from the coaster board. Um, they really work, that's like their tagline, so I decided that I would add that to it. And then the rest of this is all just, we'll leave it right in the description. When I used to teach eBay classes, to teach people how to sell on eBay, I would always say, take the picture as if you had no description and write a description as if you had no picture because you never know what the person's looking for like if they're you know if they're a more visual person they're going to say okay then i'm going to look at the picture i'll buy it based on that if they just want to read and make sure that they they're getting exactly what they want you want to make sure you have the dimensions and you have you know the type of paper it is and everything uh search terms target audience again is adults because you know it's barware not really for a kid's party i mean they're cute you know they're not particularly scary and then our keywords. So I put bar, drink, coasters, four drinks, because it's coasters, four drinks. Funny, absorbent, unique, party, barware. Um, I could put barware, a separate retro paper, fun, Halloween. I could put creepy, scary, you know, whatever. And something else I could actually do is put spider, witch. I could put, I do want to put happy Halloween though, because that's on some of them. Happy Halloween and trick or treat. So, and if you, you know, let's say I had something else that was similar, maybe it wasn't a coaster, but I put coasters by accident in the, the search, it's not the end of the world. But you don't wanna, you don't wanna spam, use spam words. Like you don't, I don't wanna put other brands, coasters for this because these are not, these are paper craft coasters. So putting counter art or, um, oh, there's another one I can't think of. It, but I don't wanna put other brands. I don't wanna say Disney because they're not Disney. They're you know, they're just whatever they, this thing is. There's no way to put all that in one line. Maybe. Yeah, they gave you a lot more keywords, but, you know, make sure you're using ones that actually, you know, work for your product. Again, don't click save and finish. Put the rest of the details in. Um, you don't want to put these display dimensions in. You want to put the item dimensions and then the package dimensions. So these are four by four and they're like nothing high. Shipping weight six ounces. Oh no, four ounces. Got a lot of four ounces today. Material type is paper. And then the package type, because they're actually packaged in this little clear box, 
or four by four by one. And I just realized that something I didn't really say is that they're packaged in a clear box. That's it. See, now the category isn't here, so I don't know that it could be changed, unless I missed it, which was a question earlier. I think if you went back in, you might be able to find it. Um, but in the description, I want to say that they come in a clear box, a clear, uh, They only give you five lines, so I just need to. Uh... In clear box. Like it's not really a box, it's just a, you know, a clear package is fine. Like it's not really gift. Jeez, I have, it's not really, a, um, you know, it's not like a gift box. It's just like a plastic box. Okay, so that's everything. Okay, this is the this is the one that says it may take up to thirty minutes. It, these are just different. I, it, I don't know why this page came up this time and not on the other two times, but it's just what it is. And continue. And it's not because it's a parent child because sometimes this comes up other ways. Okay, now there's two more things we need to do here. We're going a little over in time. We need to put the photos in. And if you click this little arrow, it'll make it a down arrow. And then you can hover over the titles and it will tell you which is which. Like this should be the yellow spider. Uh, green bats. All right, so we'll edit and we'll put the pictures for the green bats in this one. Go right to images. And we'll put in the two pictures. There's the green bats. And again, I used PhotoFuse to give it a white background. And I, I took a picture that showed that there are eight that you're getting. And then I took a picture of the package. So there's my little happy Halloween green bats. And I'll save it. And it will save it up. Let's put this one in as the swatch as well. That didn't come up last time, so. And that way, when it comes up with all the different colors, it will definitely show that. Otherwise, it, would, it shows the first picture, but this may make that process faster. And we've hit the down arrow again. And you can see the other things we listed are now, have now populated, so the pictures are showing. Come on. This one's the purple skull. So the main picture will have the eight coasters. And the package. And we'll add to the swatch. And once everything has completely loaded, then we'll hit save and finish. Now, if we go to the parent listing, we wanna make sure that it knows that it's linked to those two other images. Uh, those two other, those three other listings. So 
it's not what I meant to do. <laughs> Sorry. All right, we want to go here. We want to hit edit and make sure that they're all attached to each other. Because we just listed it, it doesn't show up immediately on Amazon. That's why it didn't do that. So if we go to variation, no, if we go to vital info and we go down, it will say related products. And you're going to either say the ASIN or the UPCs, whichever one you have handy. Because I have the UPCs right here, I'll do it. Related products will be these three. And here you do need commas so that it knows. Uh, it's either commas or semicolons. And this will link them all together. This is the one step that I think loses most people. If you're not using a flat file, which is how many people do these parent-child things, you, when you do it this way, you need to let Amazon know that they're all linked. If this does not work for some reason, you can tell it you're gonna sort them by ASIN, the ASIN number, and then when you're in the variations, it's right here. You're just gonna grab this number, tell it it's the ASINs, and put these three as your child listings. Of the three ways to list items, this is definitely like the most difficult one to get. And this, the saving this part of it takes a while. It's, it didn't glitch, it's still gonna happen. So let's stop sharing that and let me go back to the questions. Okay, so for those of you I didn't lose when I started doing the parent-child thing, oh, I'm losing my sunlight so I'm dark now. Um, when you're creating a listing, make sure that you have this, those certain things um, ready to go, the, you know, the photos ready, as much information as you can. You can type as you're going. I copied and pasted just to kind of, you know, get me moving here for you guys. Um, buying UPCs is not a big deal. There's only 15 people on the, uh, that are still here. If you want um, just one UPC from me to, you know, just to, just to play with really, um, message me on Facebook, send me a private message and just put in UPC and I will send you a UPC that will work. You can only use it once and then um, I won't use them for anything, you know, I'll just give them to you guys. So message me on Facebook, um, Abigail Russell Hunt, it comes up if you're not already friended with me. So just send me a private message through Messenger um, and just put in UPC or, you know, give me a UPC, please, or hey, lady, I want a UPC. Um, and I will send you one so that you can try to create your own listing on something, you know, maybe you want to make a bundle and you don't want to have to buy a thousand UPCs. Um, I also, I wanted to offer to um, sell people just like a list of like 20 UPCs, but there's no cost effective way to do it. If you can get a thousand of them for $14, $15, it doesn't make sense for me to charge 10 for like for ten dollars for twenty list twenty UPCs, so I have to figure out a better way um, to make them available to people. Um, okay, so two more things. I'm going to. Whoops, not that. I stopped sharing. Right, everybody can still see me. Um, I want to give you the link to my book. Don't buy it because. I want to see if anybody wants it. Signed for free, mail to your house. That's the link if you want to share that or if you want to buy it at some other time. For the next couple of days, um, actually today should be the last day, but I'm going to go through Labor Day with the book is just $15 if you want like the actual paperback. Um, the Kindle version also is that way. Um, but I'm going to give away some signed books. I also, if you're not already in the paid group, you get more information like this and more like direct access to me. Like I know Linda's in there and Debbie is. Um, but this is the pay, my paid subscription group where it's another Facebook group, but it's more like this kind of interaction where you'll be like, okay, I'm totally lost. And you and I will go on to our own little private Zoom meeting and um, I will show you, like I'll walk you through step by step, and that's one of the benefits of being in that paid group because you get that access. Also, um, I have a class, like there's different modules in there where you learn stuff and then you, people will message me and say, okay, I, 
understood until you got to here. Now, how do I, you know, how do I actually contact a wholesaler? And I'll give you the wholesalers that I work with and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so, um, all right, I have a $20 Dollar Tree gift card. Anybody want it? Anybody? Anybody? I think Deb Jean's the only one who's by her computer. <laughs> Everybody else left. Um, I have one $20 one and two $5 ones. Um, the first person to tell me the answer to this question will get the $20 one, and then the next two people will get the $5 ones. So the question is, what? Uh, name three things that you need before you sit down to do a listing. And I, I listed like five. I know because it's in my notes. Deb Jean, Debbie Tremblay, and Erica Ponce. All right, so BJ didn't quite get in. <laughs> Susan, you're cheating. No, I'm Susan. <laughs> okay, so Deb Jean gets the $20 one, which means you need to, oops, you need to hit me on Facebook with your um, mailing, like your physical mailing address, because it's an actual card, um, so that I can send you your $20 gift card to Dollar Tree. And then Debbie, whoops, Debbie Debbie, I know Debbie Tremblay. Debbie gets a $5 one. Erica gets a $5 one. Erica, did you already get a signed copy of my book? I think you did. I know Susan has one. Um, all right, now again, because there's not that many people. All right, so Erica, then you'll get, whoops, that $5 gift card, and I'm also going to give you, send you a signed copy of the book. And then. All right, so for another signed copy of the book, um, what is the software or the website I use to take the images, take the white from around my images? How do I edit my images? You don't have to spell it correctly. Yes, BJ. BJ Moore, I need you to send me a message on Facebook, a private message with your mailing address so I could send you a signed copy. Um, and let me know if you want it, how you want it signed, written up. <laughs> Donna, um, let me know if you want it to go to BJ or something else and I'll write it out to you. Donna Garrett needs her evening coffee. I never win anything on these because I cannot type that fast. And when I'm on, um, especially if I, like you'll notice, I really can't type when I'm on a webinar because I have to lift my computer up so you can see me. Otherwise, you're looking at like my cool t-shirt, which it is actually a cool t-shirt. It says, I didn't lose my mind. I sold it on eBay, which my girlfriend got me ages and ages ago. Um, and all right, so Donna, how many people are still on that did not get a signed copy of my book? Because I have 10 here. So I could actually. Um, Deb Jean, just friend me. Um, reseller is a uh, paid group, so it might not let you in. Debbie, you are lying. I never gave you a copy of the book. You were here. What kind of friend am I, huh? Oh, I'm a terrible person. <laughs> um, Debbie actually lived close enough where she um, drove to New Jersey and we went out shopping for a day. Uh, if you ever want to do that, you definitely need sneakers. Um, she'll tell you she had a lot of fun. I, don't, I didn't pay her to do that, to tell you that. But uh, Christopher, again, if you would like a copy as well, let me know. 
And Donna. All right, Deb Jean, I will send you a copy as well. And if you want to say Deb Jean, just let me know that. Otherwise, if, if, it, if you don't want it to say that, let me know that. Otherwise, I'll put it that way. You didn't know I had a book? No, that's okay. Um, I've written two books. Only one has to do with online selling. So if you find my other book, <laughs> um, I uh, unfortunately lost my husband when my son was three, and that's why I sell online. And I lost my sister a couple years ago. Um, so I wrote a book about talking to children about death because I knew what to do. It was lousy and it was awful, and you know, but you can survive those types of things. Um, Deborah, that's fine. I just need, um, it's just a book, Deborah Judge, so it's no big deal to go to Canada. Um, if you want the Kindle one, though, um, just let me know in the private message and I'd be happy to send you um, like an e-copy. Adrian, let me know what his name is and I'll make sure I put that in there. And then everyone who's here, make sure that you um, friend me on Facebook, just in general, at, under Abigail Russell Hunt, which is totally spelled bizarre. Whoops, not, that's totally not how to spell it. Friend me on Facebook. The Dollar Store Arbitrage um, group is free, and I encourage everyone to join. The reason I gave away so many gift cards is because, or I'm giving away all this stuff, is because we're closing in on a thousand members, which is great. I love that people are, you know, really jumping into it. Um, so anybody who's here, friend me on Facebook, send me a message, and tell me who you want the book sent to. So, like, if you're, um, you know, if you're name says Deborah and you prefer Deb or Debbie with an I like my mother does, um, just let me know. Thank you very much. Um, so I'll get the signed books out. Um, Debbie in, I think it was Debbie in Canada. If you just want the Deborah, if you want the, um, the ebook, I can do that as well. Uh, Susan, you can have anything you like. You have all my books, so <laughs> you'll have to pick something else. Oh, you're getting, um, you're leaving the country though, so I don't know what you want. Uh, but if you don't have the book, please let me know. If you have questions, also hit me up in the um, privately Facebook and I will do my best to answer them. Um, and in the, um, uh, I think that's it actually. If you have any other questions, let me know. This is all recorded and uh, thank you so much for joining me. Happy hunting. Thanks. Bye, everybody.